So today, I want to talk about lane position. What it is, why it matters, good position, bad position, and when that might change. When we talk about lane position, because a motorcycle is obviously much smaller than a car, we divide a lane up into three different sections. You have the left part of the lane, which we generally refer to as position one or P1, and then you have the middle and then the right part of the lane. So I'm gonna move over to P3, the right part of the lane, lane and I'll just change lanes into P1 in the right lane here. Now people like to say things like you should stay out of P2, the middle, because it's got grease and oil in it, which you can see here. It's dirty, and anytime you've got cars idling or driving slow, you do tend to get oil drops on the road. But around these parts, Vancouver Island anyway, that mostly just matters if people are going really slow or idling. It doesn't really matter anywhere that cars are generally moving. So as you can see right here, it's already a non-issue. If you can see that, there's a couple droplets, but it's not really anything to be worried about. But coming up to a red light where people are going to be stopped a lot, you don't generally want to have a bunch of, or to be sitting exactly where that guy is with uh, his hand in his lap, and his clutch not in, or his bike wasn't in gear, so if the car behind me hadn't stopped and had decided to rear end him, he would have been mush. Always be in gear and checking your mirrors and ready to go when you're stopped. Good shoulder check at least. People will say that P1 is the default position and that's basically where you should always be riding. And the reason they will give for that is because you are directly in front of a driver. As they're sitting in their car, you are in front of them. And that way they are more likely to see you and give you the respect you deserve as a road user and not try to squeeze past you. Whereas if you're all the way over on the right, you kind of just look like a bicycle and you're probably going to have people passing you. Now, the real reason why P1 is better than being all the way on the right is the line of sight for you and for other people. If I'm off on the right side of the road, I can't see around any obstacles that are on the shoulder. I can't see down a driveway or a side street that's on the right. And if I can't see down there, the people approaching from there also can't see me. So from P1, I can see better what's happening on the right. I've got a bit of a buffer zone and I still have quite a bit of difference or distance between myself and the left side of the road. So I can see if anyone's approaching there. But again, if I move, see there's a driveway, I can see it's clear, but if I move all the way over here, I can't actually see anything if there's any, uh, like the trees and the power poles obstructing my view. I'm nearly invisible to anyone approaching from the right.
So the general consensus is the left part of the lane is the right place to be. And the right part of the lane, if you're riding alone, is a bad place to be. And a lot of people will say the center of the lane is absolutely a horrible place to be. There's nothing wrong as far as traction goes right now in riding here. This is a perfectly clean section of pavement. The cars are moving enough that there's not any real uh, accumulation of gunk and oil. So if I want to ride here for whatever reason, I can safely do it. Like say to avoid a manhole cover, but manhole covers are often in that part of the lane as well. So. You should be comfortable moving around the lane, depending on the scenario. Just uh, don't get locked into any one spot for no reason. If you want to go to a different part of the lane, if you have a reason to move somewhere, then by all means do that. But don't just haphazardly wander around the lane for no reason. If you're just doing this all the time, going riding along and then all of a sudden you're drifting over it's it's bad habit it's bad practice and if you're not doing shoulder checks before you change position it is entirely possible for you to end up with another motorcycle beside you that you didn't see and all of a sudden come over and hit them i have had people i don't know frequently just show up beside me while i'm riding if you do a position change without doing a shoulder check, you run the risk of hitting people like that. So, going down a road like this, the position I'm in is great. There's, there's no issues with this. I can see everything quite well. I can see the left side of the road. I can see down the driveways. I can see on the right side. I can see down the driveways. I've got a good buffer to keep me from anyone approaching the road from the side. What I don't have is a buffer to protect me from the oncoming traffic. And I have had people bring that up as an issue for them. They don't feel safe because of the oncoming traffic. Always check your mirrors when you're slowing down. Make sure the people behind you are stopping as well. question becomes, why am I more comfortable with having no buffer between me and the oncoming traffic than I am with the side traffic? And the reason for that is people are a lot less likely to suddenly cross the center line and hit you. It is entirely possible, though, for them to want to turn left in front of you if they don't see you. But by being where I am, even if there is cars in front of me, I am making myself more visible to the oncoming traffic. If I'm off to the right, it's entirely possible that I would be hidden by another vehicle and oncoming traffic might not see me. Someone might want to turn left and not know I'm there and then turn left in front of me and I could get seriously hurt. But for the most part, people don't just drift across the center line and into your space. And if they do, they will probably give some indication of that before they get to you. People don't generally drive in a perfectly straight line and then suddenly swerve out of their lane for no reason. If you see someone looking like they can't hold their line and wandering across the center line, obviously you would want to adjust for that and do something to keep yourself safe. Whether it's just pulling off to the side of the road or once again just moving over as they approach. But depending on how erratic their behavior is, I might just want to pull right off the road. So, Trying to hide from oncoming traffic by moving off to the side 
to the shoulder makes them more likely to cut you off. You're either you could be hiding behind another vehicle or you could be looking like you're about to turn right. So they might not expect you to continue through the intersection that they're planning on turning at. And now you may notice how I have been drifting through the lane through those turns. I am widening the turn for myself and using the whole lane to make the turn even easier. I will do more on that idea in a little bit. So again, the main reason for picking your lane position should be visibility. We want people to see us. We want to be able to see them. If we cannot see someone, then there's no way that they are going to see us. Even if people have a perfect line of sight on a motorcycle, they will often say they never saw it. So if we don't at least make it so that we can see them, we definitely cannot expect for them to see us at all. So sometimes when you're dealing with oncoming traffic, you will actually want to move over into the right portion of the lane to make it so that people in a row of vehicles will see you. You don't want someone to think the road is clear because they can't see you from their view behind another vehicle and then pull out to pass them and then suddenly see you when it's too late. So if, particularly if you're going down the highway against oncoming traffic and there's a large truck and you can see there's a row of vehicles behind them, that would be a really good time do your shoulder check, get moved over into P3 so that the people behind that truck have a better angle of view to see you rather than you being tucked in against the center line and being totally obscured from their view. Of course, it is their responsibility to make sure it's clear, but they're, generally speaking, going to be looking for a car, not a motorcycle, and a car takes up a lot more space, so they don't think they need to look that closely at the center line to be able to see someone. Now, if the first reason that we pick our lane position is to provide the best visibility, the second thing to consider with lane position is traction. And that's why people say to stay away from the center of the lane, because they say it's dirty and oily and you won't get traction there. But, as you can see, it's not really bad in most cases. Again, unless people are riding really, or driving slowly, then you get a lot more chance for everything to drip off their engine and get all over the road. I have had times when I have absolutely needed to ride in P2, in the center of the lane. One scenario where this tends to happen is if you're going down the highway and it's raining a lot, P1 and P2 are where the car tires are, basically, and in a heavy traffic area you can end up with indentations in the road from, from all the way to the vehicles running over those spots all the time. So you can end up with a scenario where you've got really heavy rain and those grooves actually fill up with water and the only place that's kind of dry and you can kind of get decent traction would be the center of the lane. So you kind of have to have to ride up on top of this hill to stay out of just a giant stream of water that you'd be riding through otherwise. So I'm always just sort of doing quick math in my head to figure out what the biggest threat is and how to avoid that. And I would count traffic coming from the side, either side, to be a much bigger threat than oncoming traffic, unless I can see something strange about the oncoming traffic, which I am, of course, always looking for. So, occasionally, you'll be in a situation where you've got, say, a car up 
a head that's going to enter the lane from both sides and you need to figure out what's going on and sometimes shake the bike around to make sure those people see you. Scenario like that, obviously, when I saw that car start to move, I wanted to get far away from it. by moving back and forth, I'm also getting my headlight to move around and hopefully get their attention and make them realize that there is a motorcycle there. They may not. Here, we'll do it again. Right in the blind spot of the driver, I can tell that by looking at the driver. I can see that they were not in a good position to see me. So again, just getting that headlight moving you can end up blending in with your surroundings quite easily. When you're following someone, you can have your tail light look like their tail light from someone to someone behind you. And when you're in front of someone, or even behind them, uh, you can have your headlight and their tail or their headlight look like one and the same as well. So by occasionally when you see oncoming traffic or approaching traffic from the sides just make sure there's no one beside you and give it a little bit of a wiggle to break up that uh, just get it moving a little bit side to side to break your light away from the stationary light of the vehicle around you so right here we've got a bit of an example why P1 might not be a great place to be sometimes. That truck is now obstructing the car, the driver of that car, who also wants to turn left from seeing me. So right now, not an issue, but if I was rolling past a truck that was stopped in a left turn lane, I would want to get moved over more to the center or to the right of the lane or even into the right hand lane to give anyone who may be on the other side of that wanting to turn left a better view of me so that they have a chance of knowing that I'm there. can't even tell if there is anyone wanting to turn left. Now I know there isn't. So it's scenarios like that, particularly when you have two vehicles wanting to use a left-hand, opposing left-hand turn lanes, where you can definitely end up in a situation where a driver can honestly say, oh, I didn't see the motorcycle. If you're tucked in to the left, why would they see you? You're hiding from them. You need to get yourself moved over into a spot where they can see you. You need to put yourself in a position where they at least have the opportunity to see you and then make sure that they see you. Otherwise, you're just rolling the dice with your life as you approach intersections. If you don't make sure that you're visible, there's no reason for anyone to see you, and there's no reason for them to not turn in front of you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I know I haven't been making safety videos uh, very consistently, but I am working on it, and I'm trying to get more stuff out. And I'm hoping these things are of value to you. So yeah, give it a like. Hit the subscribe button, help me out, and I'm going to keep on trying to help you out. Thanks.